Hey y'all, what's going on? I wanted to, as this video says, to walk you through a brief, brief history of the Camino, or known as the Way, or AKA the Way of St. James. And it's in honor of the Apostle St. James, specifically St. James the Greater. Now, St. James the Greater just means he was older than St. James the Lesser, the other apostle, so that's why there's a difference. But Anyways, St. James, after the resurrection, after Pentecost, went and just evangelized all of the Middle East and all of Jerusalem, just like all the other apostles. But it also led him, tradition holds, all the way to Spain. And he evangelized there, converted many people, ended up coming back to the Holy Land where he died for his faith. He was a martyr. And then tradition holds that his body was then shipped back to Spain where it was laid to rest. And then they put a beautiful cathedral um, over the tomb of St. James. And so people started taking a pilgrimage to this apostle's gravesite to pray and to visit his tomb. And the, the history behind that kind of grew. And the first written record of the way, the Camino, was in the very early 19th century, around 812 to 817, depending on you know what you look at. But again, this is that's the first written record. This has been going on though f even before that. So you can easily say this has been going on for 12 to 1300 years, making this one of, if not the oldest pilgrimage site in the world. And so with the rise of Christendom, especially up in France, the Camino became very popular into the 9th, 10th, 11th, and it kind of peaked into the 14th century. But then with war ravaging Europe, with the Protestant Reformation, with all sorts of things happening, it took a major dive. It never died. I mean, there were still always people every year walking the Camino. It just didn't wasn't as popular. And it didn't become popular again until the early kind of mid 20th century, kind of after, especially after World War II, when Europe started settling down. Um, and you kind of see this exponential spike happen, especially in the 1980s. There was only, you know, maybe a thousand people doing it in the mid late 80s and then into the 90s and now into 2019. It's just, it, it, last year's consensus was around 320,000 pilgrims walked it just last year alone. Now you may be asking several questions and I, I hope to rattle off some of them. So the first one is, where do you even begin? Where do you start? What's the route that you should take? And back in the day, the answer was your front doorstep. That was where you started your pilgrimage and you would just start walking and you'd find your way until you got to the Camino de Santiago. Now, over time though, there became more popular paths. And so I, what I've seen, again, there's a whole network. In fact, if I can show you, I've got this, my passport here for the Camino. And if you look like this is just Spain alone, if you can kind of see that right there, that's just Spain. And then if you zoom out into Europe, um, this is the European network system, if you will, right there. And so as you can see, it's just, it's massive, the network of paths and routes that you can take. But once you get into Spain, there's really like three big ones. There's the French route, which is the most popular. It's the easiest path with regards to signage, with regards to the, the path, it's very noticeable. You, you can't really get lost too badly on the French route. It starts obviously in France in the southern part and it goes down into Spain. Uh, and that's the route that I'll be taking starting in Sadia and then heading to the Camino. The next path is the English path, which is you start in England, you take a boat down onto the northern part of Spain and then just take a short walk straight down south from the north part of Spain. And then the final kind of big one is the Portuguese route, which is a as you would imagine, starts in Portugal and you go north and you kind of go along the coastline. Now, as I said, the some of these paths are much more well marked, they're well uh, attended, there's a lot of pilgrims, some have very little pilgrims, some are more rustic, some have uh, not so great of paths or not well uh, and lined paths so you may easily get lost. I figured for my very first time doing this solo, not knowing what to do, I was gonna take sort of the most straight line 
the most pop popular path, if you will. Um, but regardless, I'm super excited. So the next question may be, now, how do I know where to go? What, how, is there a marker? Yes, actually, there is a marker. It's a very famous marker along these paths. It's known as the seashell path. And as you'll see here, there's signage all throughout the this towns and, uh, and countryside of the seashell with an arrow pointing, or sometimes the seashell itself is pointing. Now you may be asking, what does the seashell have to do with it? Well, the tradition of the Camino is you would walk it all the way to Santiago, but you wouldn't stop there. You would go all the way to the coastline, the end of Spain, which was kind of known as the end of the world, up, up on the Atlantic Ocean. And obviously being at a beach, there were seashells lined everywhere. And so people would grab a seashell, take it home with them as a sign of, I've completed this pilgrimage. And that became sort of the symbol for the Camino. Now today, people will use the seashell and they'll put it on their backpacks, they'll put it on themselves to represent themselves as, hey, I'm a pilgrim and not only am I a pilgrim, I'm a pilgrim of the Camino. And that way it's just kind of an ID, a badge, if you will. You may be asking, what's the minimum or the maximum that you need to walk in order to do the Camino. Now, as far as a minimum, if you're walking it, it's 100 kilometers. If you're biking it, it would be 200 kilometers. And it doesn't matter however long it takes you to do it, it just has to be a total of 100 kilometers. The maximum, there is no maximum. You could just start wherever you want. If you want to do several hundred, I know people will go upwards of 800 to 1,000 kilometers to walk it, and they'll take months out of their lives to walk the Camino. Unfortunately, I don't have that much time. I have a week, so I'm starting at Saria and uh, going for just a little over 100 kilometers. The next obvious question is, okay, but then how do they know that you actually walk the Camino? Like, how will they know that you did the Camino and, and to show validity and credential? Well, that's what this comes in. Hang on. That comes in. This is the Credencial de Pellegrino. I'm still working on my Spanish. Uh, this is the credentials of the pilgrim. This is the Camino passport, if you will. So this is my real passport, my US passport, but this is my pilgrim passport. So these two are some of the most important documents to carry. What I do, or what I will be doing, is if you look on this side, it's completely empty, completely blank. And the reason why it's blank is each town that I visit, every church that I go to, every restaurant, every hostel, every hotel that I stay in on my way to De Santiago, I'm supposed to have these stamped. Now where I'm starting, when you have 100 kilometers, basically you have to get two stamps a day minimum. If you're going much further out, you only need one. And it's really cool because if you go for a long stretch of time, your whole passport can be filled up with these beautiful stamps that some of these stamps are very old. They're very unique to that town, to that family, to that area. It's just, it's beautiful. So when you arrive to the Camino de Santiago, to the uh, pilgrim's office, they'll ask, for this, I give it to them, they check it, and then they'll give me the certificate to say I've completed the Camino. And I guess the last part of all this is the question of why should someone do the Camino? You know, everybody has their own reasons. Um, and some do it for secular reasons, for health, for uh, contemplation, for just to get away. Uh, some like myself and for thousands and the majority I would argue for spiritual reasons to be with God to be with Christ uh, to just recenter one's life in God and I I'll tell you mine why I'm doing it. One is it's been a very long dream of mine uh, for a good eight to nine years. I've been wanting to do this, been thinking about it, been dreaming about it, and I'm just uh, very humbled and honored that I can have this opportunity to go on the Camino. The other is I'm very thankful I get to do it during Lent. Uh, so this is part of my preparation for Lent and during the Lenten season uh, to offer prayers and supplications uh, and the miles and my feet and anything else, uh, fasting uh, and everything on the Camino. The other reason why is for my family. I'm praying, offering this up for my wife, for my children, the ones that are in heaven, the ones that are here, and the one that we're expecting in September, and just praising God for that and uh, offering up their holiness, their sanctity, and 
uh, and all of our intentions as a family for this Camino. And then finally, I'm, I'm offering this Camino up for all of you watching this, for taking the, your time out of your lives. So please send me your prayer intentions down below. You can send me a message, message if it's a little too personal. Um, you can leave it on Instagram, wherever you can find me. Please let me know. Um, I'll show you guys in my packing video, which will probably be my next video. Um, my journal, which I'll be taking, where I'll be writing down all of my prayer intentions and while I'll be praying for each and every mile along the way of the Camino. So that will about do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to keep tabs, um, especially leading up to the Camino. I leave on March 12th. Um, so I'll be doing another video on probably on Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, maybe Thursday, and then definitely uh, one more before I head out. So you won't want to miss any. I will try and upload while I'm there. No promises on that. But uh, definitely stay subscribed if you want to see videos uh, from the Camino. And I will see y'all in the next one. God bless.